Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving an interesting differential equation. We have x to the power y prime equals y, and we're going to be solving for y values. So we're basically looking at the derivative of y in the exponent, but we could also bring it down. In other words, we can write this as y prime equals by using definition of logs, log with base x of y. So we're looking for a function whose derivative is the log function, but it's a function of y with base x. So it's kind of like a weird scenario, right? But let's see how we can solve a problem like this. So I'm going to be introducing a new function in this video. I don't know if you've seen it before, but if you do know it, don't say it, okay? So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and bring this down because if it's in the exponent, we can't really solve for it, right? It's really hard. So let's go ahead and natural log both sides. Natural log, you don't have to use natural log, but it's easier for many reasons uh, because, for example, if you need to differentiate something, it's easy. If you're going to integrate it or, you know, whatever, it's easy. So that's why we want to stick with uh, ln as much as possible. And then by using properties of logarithms, remember when you have ln a to the b, that can be written as b times ln a. In other words, this is ex this exponent can be moved uh, to the front. So now we can go ahead and move this. That becomes y prime times ln x equals ln y. Now, is this better than the original? Probably, because guess what? This is a separable differential equation. Okay? I'm also going to show you the results from Wolfram Alpha. Do you think Wolfram Alpha, Wolfram Alpha or WA can solve this problem successfully? What are your thoughts without checking? Don't cheat. And just think about it and let us know uh, if you think that Wolfram Alpha can solve it or is it going to say no solutions or nothing. Sometimes it says Wolfram Alpha doesn't understand your query. It just doesn't. Okay, and what is it called, by the way? Is it a language model? large language model, AI, machine learning, whatever. I don't know because anytime I call it something, people say, oh, it's not that. What is it then? It's just a calculator? Anyways, that's a different story. Let's go ahead and get back to our story. So once we did this, this becomes a separable equation and uh, re let's replace uh, y prime with dy over dx. So it's going to become more clear times ln x equals ln y. Since this is separable, why don't we separate the variables? What happens with separable equations? For example, when you have something like, you know, f of x dy equals, oops, I was supposed to write dx. f of x dx equals g of y dy. We can basically integrate both sides and that'll, that'll give us the solution. Of course, if we can integrate these functions easily. That's the million dollar question. Can we integrate? Let's find out. So let's go ahead and divide by ln y, multiply by dx. Some people say, oh, you can't multiply by dx. You know what? This is a fraction, and yes, I can. So we're going to multiply by dx, and then we're going to go ahead and divide by ln y, and then divide by ln x. So at the end, this is what it's going to look like. dy over ln y. Oops. Sometimes the pen doesn't want to write uh, or some wants to go crazy dy over ln y equals dx over ln x. Now, we were able to separate the variables. Really, really cool. Now we can go ahead and integrate both sides. Good question, right? Okay, great. Now, when we integrate, this kind of looks like, well, we have the same function on both sides, right? For example, if you're trying to integrate e to the y dy and e to the x dx, would that mean y equals x because e to the y equals e to the x? Well, yes and no, because when you integrate here, you would get e to the y, and here you would get e to the x, but you would also get a constant, a plus k, something like that, so that y does not have to equal x. Under certain conditions, yes. We were not given any initial conditions, so we can't really tell, but that's what happens. And from here, are you able to solve for y? Yes. If you just write k as e to the power c, some constant again, because if k is constant and c is constant, this can be done, right? And then from here, you're going to get e to the y equals e to the x plus c by multiplying these two together, and then this would eventually lead to y equals x plus c. 
So y and x differ by a constant that doesn't have to be zero. So do we have a similar scenario here? But yes and no. I mean, we do, but the thing is, how do you integrate one over ln y? The answer is you can't unless you use a special function. So that's why I'm going to go ahead and introduce what is called the logarithmic integral. What is that? Basically, we're talking about something like this. 1 over ln t dt and 0 to x. t varies from... Why did I do it this way? Because this is basically how we can define it using a definite integral, right? And you need to make sure x does not equal 1 because we have a... What's it called? Singularity. Such a nice word, right? At x equals 1, so you have to exclude it. But what happens if you just look at it generically like what is dt over ln t in general, that should be li of t. So in other words, li of x defined like that, and li is basically the logarithmic integral, okay? That's a special type of integral because you can't find an elementary function for the integral of 1 over ln t. In other words, there is no elementary function that we know of whose derivative is 1 over ln x or ln t or whatever that is, right? That's why we had to invent a new function called li of x, which is logarithmic integral. Okay, great. So we do it on both sides, and that gives us the following. li of y equals li of x, and don't forget the constant. Of course, you always have to use the constant. Okay, but how do we solve for y if you don't know what c is, or if c does not equal zero. Obviously, if c is zero, we get the simple case, which is li of y equals li, by the way, li is logarithmic integral, that's short for that. This implies y equals x, doesn't it? Right? Obviously, it should. But if c does not equal zero, Houston, we have a problem. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at that case now. So we have li of y, equals li of x plus a non-zero constant. Now, we do need to do the following to both sides. You know what that's called? That is called the, the inverse li. Okay, what, what does that mean? Well, we're just going to go ahead and apply li inverse on both sides so we can go ahead and get rid of the li because we don't know what it is, right? Do we know li inverse? No, not really. But at least we can say that, okay, we, in, we applied the inverse function. So li inverse and li are kind of canceled out, and then we end up with y equals li inverse of li of x plus c. Again, if c is 0, then we get y equals x. Now, do you think Wolfram Alpha can solve this problem? What do you think? Because we're about to check the results. Ready, set, and go. Ta-da! Yes, it can do it, and it's just called this li log integral, but guess what? And by this is the inverse, and that's a constant, and this is li of x. I don't know why it used log integral here. I guess that's how uh, Wolfram Alpha interprets it with the Mathematica, the language that's used in Wolfram Alpha. Anyways, this brings us to the end of this video. <laughs> Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.